Hey, everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital terrorists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. You will definitely remember Cleveland Meredith Jr. I've done a couple of segments about him. He's finally been sentenced. Meredith is a 53-year-old man who drove from Colorado to Washington, D.C. He had multiple weapons with him. He had thousands of rounds of ammunition, including hollow point and armor-piercing bullets. He was arrested on January 8th, and a superseding indictment was issued against him on April 2nd that charged Meredith with four felony counts, um, interstate communication of threats, possession of unregistered firearms, possession of unregistered ammunition, and possession of large capacity ammunition feeding devices. That first charge was due, as you'll probably remember, to the fact that he was on his way to D.C. and he was messaging, he was sending numerous text messages to family members saying that he was hoping to shoot both Speaker Nancy Pelosi and D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. He specifically said he was hoping to put bullets in their head. He also mentioned running over Nancy Pelosi with his car, and then he made some general but, again, violent threats about I think he said, removing craniums from shoulders. Um, Luckily, fate stepped in. Meredith experienced car trouble, so he didn't actually make it to the Capitol on January 6th and in time to do any damage. But I'm sure his attorney advised him that there was no way getting out of that first charge because they had all of his threats in writing. So in September, Meredith pleaded guilty to one felony charge of transmitting threats via interstate commerce. Federal sentencing guidelines call for anywhere between 37 to 46 months in prison for that specific crime. And Meredith was sentenced on December 14th. At his sentencing hearing, Meredith's defense attorney tried to portray him as this harmless person. He was just someone who was all talk, no action. Um, Luckily, Judge Amy Berman Jackson did not buy that. And she pointed out that his own family had turned him in. Um, In fact, his own mother said that she believed that by turning him in, they were, quote, saving his life. There's also that little issue of planning and intent. I mean, you don't take multiple weapons and thousands of bullets with you if you have no intention of using them. So the judge noted that pesky little detail. Um, She also mentioned that he has had previous physical altercations. He also had a physical altercation in D.C. the day after the, the Capitol attack. He allegedly assaulted a man. There was some sort of traffic related argument that they got into. I don't know if one accused the other of stealing their parking space or something like that. I mean, it was something that trivial. And he pushed the man to the ground and assaulted him. So Meredith's attorney tried to say, oh, well, he only had the weapons and the bullets because he was going to take his sons on a holiday trip in Colorado. Now, to my knowledge, there's no U.S. holidays in the first week of January right? It's pretty much New Year's Day and you're done. Um, And you don't drive away from Colorado (laughs) to the other side of the country if you're planning a trip in Colorado. I don't know. Gosh, maybe common sense. Anyway, Judge Jackson also questioned this this argument, um, this BS excuse. She noted that he had armor piercing ammo with him. I mean, what kind of trip are you taking your kids on? What are you planning to shoot with armor piercing bullets? But in addition to his attorney, Meredith's parents both spoke at the sentencing hearing. Meredith and Meredith himself, he told the judge that his threats were just, quote, political hyperbole that was too hyper. (laughs) And then he said, quote, 
I'm a protector of people. I'm a defender of people. There's not a stranded motorist on the road. I don't stop to help. I was out of control that day. I apologize to Speaker Pelosi if she heard about it, if I scared her. I apologize to my family. I apologize to my sons. I'm a good man, and I'm very embarrassed about this whole situation. It's not who I am. Really? Is it not? Um, when your own family is saying, yeah, this is who you are and you need to get help. I think that's who you are. But his father called him a good boy, told the judge, he's a good boy. He just got in with the wrong crowd. <laughs> this guy isn't a teenager. Does he realize his son is not a teenager anymore? I mean, seriously, this guy's 50 something years old. Um, he also blamed QAnon. This is the father. He blamed QAnon. He said that he fell for it hook, line, and sinker. And then Judge Jackson pointed out that Meredith's issues existed way before QAnon, right? Before anybody knew or had heard of QAnon, he had these issues. She brought up the fact that he has for 30 years refused to deal with the trauma of losing his sister at an early age and that he rejected mental health treatment to try to help him work through issues that really ultimately led to the dissolution of not just his business, but also his marriage. And the judge said that based on his own family statements, as well as that of the psychiatrist who did an assessment of him, she believes that he needs, quote, an intensive multi-layered treatment. Judge Jackson also said, quote, it needs to be crystal clear that it is not patriotism. It is not justified to descend on the nation's capital at the behest of a candidate who lost an election and terrorize others. The fact that we need to say that is kind of frightening, but she ended up only sentencing this guy to 28 months in prison. Oh, and she requires him to take part in a drug and mental health treatment program. Plus, he gets credit for time served, and he was already in jail for 11 months. So he's only going to be in federal prison for 17 months for this. This is, as I've said before, this is complete and utter bullshit. I've shared with you guys how Daniel Baker an anti-Trump person, was sentenced to 44 months in prison for suggesting that we all might need to take up arms to protect Capitol buildings in various states, to protect them from Trump supporters. No history of violence, didn't take a weapon anywhere, didn't take a weapon to any Capitol buildings. He never mentioned any specific person or harming anyone specifically. He was calling for a defense, not an offense. Yet a Florida judge gave Baker nearly four years in prison, and this Meredith guy gets essentially half that amount of time for actually taking steps towards committing violent crimes. This is beyond infuriating. I... I I just don't even know what to say anymore. I'm out of my mind with this stuff. So I'll let you guys know if I hear any more. But yeah, once again, it's a joke. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon. <laughs>